Hi, thank you for joining today. My name is Kelly Mack, and on behalf of my collaborators, Megan Hoffman, Udaya Lakshmi, Rosa Ariago, Scott Hudson, and Jennifer Mankoff, I'd like to present our work titled, Making a Medical Maker's Playbook, an Ethnographic Study of Safety Critical Collective Design by Makers in Response to COVID-19. Medical making is the application of digital fabrication to create medical devices and support the point of care. Using technologies like 3D printers and hobbyist electronics, medical makers create medical and assistive technologies outside of traditional manufacturing infrastructures. Sometimes this happens within expert amateur communities, and sometimes it happens in hospitals and clinics. Prior to COVID-19, medical making was emerging as a practice across a variety of institutions and grassroots communities. In 2019, we presented work at CSCW where we interviewed many key stakeholders in these communities, such as clinicians at the Veterans Health Association who are bringing 3D printing into hospital practice, and groups like LEA in Gaza who use consumer 3D printing to supplement failed supply chains in the Gaza Strip. At that time, medical making was a growing effort of maybe a few thousand makers worldwide. However, with the onset of COVID-19, the medical maker community grew to hundreds of thousands of members who are working to supplement a global supply chain crisis of personal protective equipment, or PPE, like the N95 masks and face shields. We conducted an ethnographic study of one of these newly emerged communities between March and August of 2020. Megan Hoffman, the first author of this work, joined Make for COVID, a Colorado-based medical maker community, as a core organizer for that period. Our team met weekly to discuss and analyze her experience and the data that she collected from their online community through a small social media to tool called the Mighty Network and an organizer Slack. At the same time, we were more broadly analyzing a number of social media-based maker communities who were conducting similar efforts across the world and interviewing clinical staff who were interfacing with these groups in the United States. Of all of the communities we investigated, Make for COVID developed one of the most advanced supply chains. Ultimately, they delivered more than 100,000 pieces of PPE to clinicians in the state of Colorado. Beyond their 3D printing efforts, they developed a delivery infrastructure that even included a relationship with the civilian air patrol to deliver PPE made by makers in the larger Denver metro area to the rural regions of the state. Make for COVID was structured around three sub-communities, community organizers, mask sewists, and 3D printing makers. Many of the pain points that they faced derived from conflicts in what each constituency expected and wanted to be doing and what was asked of them by other groups. In particular, makers often wanted to contribute novel PPE designs, while organizers needed them to consistently manufacture PPE to specifications. Essentially, Make for COVID turned into an engaged volunteer workforce of 2,000 hobbyist engineers into a distributed factory line. There is a strong desire for makers to participate in the prototyping process, but in medical making, where clinical review is essential to ensure that products will be safe and effective in clinical care, the highly limited efforts of clinical reviewers becomes a bottleneck. Make for COVID managed this bottleneck in a variety of ways, such as design competitions and triaging lower risk design tasks, but ultimately, this proves to be the core conflict in the community-based medical making. Once makers adjusted to their manufacturing role, the challenges shifted to adapting technology that is designed for one-off imperfect prototypes to rapid manufacturing of safety critical devices. 3D models alone do not communicate all of the challenges of printing a high quality face shield. Makers used a variety of consumer printers, each of which needed to be tuned to produce quality results. Unlike a factory floor, where this tuning is done once, Medical making is distributed across thousands of participants in unique environments. This complexity often overwhelmed the community organizers who supported these makers. Make for COVID managed this with ever evolving design specifications and a thorough, if not efficient, quality control effort at their warehouses. However, this is a task better served by the design tools these communities rely on. Beyond specifying the geometry to be printed, design tools should integrate manufacturing instructions and make them portable across a variety of 3D printers and situations. These designs need to adapt to the many physical contexts that the geometries will ultimately be built in. 
Medical making requires engagement with a number of different experts, clinicians and biomedical researchers, regulatory experts, engineers, and the makers who are ultimately responsible for producing these items. However, design tools are almost exclusively targeted at technical experts who can engineer complex devices. Or at novice users, such as children, who are assumed to have no particular expertise. However, we can instead consider these non-technical experts to be orthogonal experts who have some external expertise, such as a clinical background, that must be integrated into the design process. Expanding who can participate in making requires us to build tools for the diverse communities that put making to novel and critical uses rather than simplifying traditional engineering practices. Make for COVID and communities like them show the potential of maker communities and digital fabrication to serve a critical role in supplementing and transforming critical supply chains. However, these communities are currently fighting the affordances of design tools that support small-scale prototyping while ignoring the substantial challenges of production. They are also limited by affordances derived from engineering practice, rather than the diverse backgrounds of orthogonal experts who serve these communities. Thank you for listening and please feel free to reach out with questions. Thank you.